Hey, it's the first Prez Monday check-in. We'll have a chat, but not spill tea. Hey, it's the first Prez Monday check-in. We got the Bible and Greg and me. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another edition of the Monday check-in. I'm Damon Jensen Heitman. One of the pastors at First Presbyterian Church, Hastings, Nebraska, joined by... Greg Allen Pickett, the other pastor of First Presbyterian Church in Hastings. Welcome back. Thanks. Where was I? Uh, you know that answer to that question better than I do. Maybe. Who's to say? Uh, you were away for a couple mm-hmm. of weeks. We have not done one of these for a couple of weeks. Mm. I, thought, okay. I thought about doing one with Rose last yeah. week, but we read through the scripture together... <laughs> and she said... Nobody had anything. Well, Greg, that's kind of so on the nose that there's not a whole lot <laughs> we would have to say about it. And then whatever you would say would really just be a preview of your sermon because there's not much more to say beyond that. Mm, mm-hmm. And we wouldn't want people to have to listen to the Monday check-in and then hear the same thing in the sermon. I'm like, well, that kind of happens every week, Rose. I was going to say, that sounds to me as though Rose found a kind of a clever way of getting out of doing this. I, you know, she wasn't unwilling. She just read through the mm. scripture. And she's like, oh, what are we going to do with David <laughs> collecting all this money for his capital campaign and his mm-hmm. church? Mm-hmm. And we're doing the same thing. It kind of, it's just on the nose. And I said, yeah, that's... And Dan Deffenbaugh made the same comment to me too. He goes, Greg, what are the odds that the scripture for this Sunday... Yeah. I said, well, the odds are that Greg manipulated the lectionary to make the scripture <laughs> for this good. Sunday... <laughs> Pretty good. Indeed. So, yeah. High. The odds were high. The odds were good for that. Uh, but it was a joyful mm-hmm. Sunday of celebration as folks turned in their pledge cards and uh, we concluded the capital campaign. And uh, yeah, it was good stuff. Yeah, it was a nice Sunday. Communion, baptism, all the good things. That's it, right? Yeah. Like those are the sacraments, right? They are. That's the extent of the Presbyterian list of sacraments communion and baptism. So. So if you didn't come across some outward invisible sign of some inward and invisible grace on Sunday, then I, I don't know what happened. Because that's like the whole point. It is indeed the right? whole point. Those are the same sacraments in the UCC church, right? You don't have any more sacraments than that. Mm-mm. I didn't think so. Mm-mm. No. The Catholics have, is it seven sacraments? That sounds right to me. But I don't, I don't really know that for sure. Yeah. That sounds that sounds right. But while we're recording, I'm not going to try to list them. So, okay. I think marriage is one. Yes, and funeral rites are another. Mm-hmm. And and uh, baptisms and communion. And we're going to stop there mm-hmm. at this point. We feel confident in those. Those four. Were That's a passing grade. Pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Four out of seven. Yeah. It's a barely passing grade. I'd, that's passing. <laughs> I didn't say it was an A. I, I know for sure what another one is that could get me up to a higher grade. But oh. I'm not, not going to do it. Not going to do it. Well, fair enough then. The Monday check in, for those who don't know, is um, we do this almost every week. And we have a little chat about the scripture that we're going to use for the upcoming Sunday, almost like a little preview of sorts of the <laughs> upcoming Sunday. And uh, we take a look at the scripture, we do a little miniature Bible study, talk a little bit about the themes that we see in it, maybe the questions that we have for the text, maybe some of the questions we might think the text has for us. And then we switch gears, we talk a little bit about the life of the church, and we oftentimes transition into this next section with a word of prayer. Uh, it's been too long ago for me to remember whose turn it is. So, do you have a preference? I'll uh, I'll pray. Okay, let's pray. Gracious, and loving God, thank you for this opportunity to reconvene, to gather, and to study your Word. Thank you for uh, bringing Damon safely back to us, and for the way that we have this chance to really dig in and think about what you might be trying to say to us, O oh God. As we study your word uh, from the Old Testament prophet Hosea, as well as the words from Jesus and the Gospel of Matthew, may they speak to us anew today. May they give us fresh perspectives on the people that you're calling us to be. 
We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So for this upcoming Sunday, we are continuing to take a look at some Older Testament passages, primarily focusing on those. And we have a selection from the prophet Hosea. Uh, This is chapter 11, verses um, 1 through 8, at least, and maybe 1 through 11. I'm just going to go ahead and read 1 through 11, but I don't know how far we'll go on Sunday morning. So uh, this is chapter 11, 1 through 11 of Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim how to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities, it consumes their oracle priests, and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me, to the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboam? My heart, my heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim. For I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria. And I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. And that's where that one ends. And then also, just in case we have time to get to it, Matthew chapter 5, 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and talk to them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Hmm. That's where that ends. Greg, what do you got? Well... The Hosea passage is an interesting one. Um, Mm -hmm. The prophet Hosea spends the first 10 chapters uh, of his writing um, really railing against Israel, uh, raking them across the coals. And just for for a note, when when it says Israel, we're just talking basically about uh, God's people, Mm -hmm. Um, not the nation state of Israel or anything like that. And Ephraim is actually the same. It's interchangeable with Israel. So anytime yeah. you see a reference to Israel, Ephraim in this passage, that's that's who we're talking about. It's referring to one of the tribes. Correct. Of Israel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but they're used interchangeably. Yep. Um so yeah, so we get ten chapters of them really being raked across the coals for straying from God and God's plan for them. Mm-hmm. Um, straying into uh, idolatry, straying into injustice. Um, if you read chapters one through ten, there's some sort of um, they have the God's people have have bent to Assyria because they think they'll protect them, and they have to pay really high taxes to Assyria, and so the rich is the rich people are exploiting the poor people to extract the taxes to pay, and. They've turned to worshiping idols, as we read in here, that they keep sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. 
Um, and so God's people have strayed really far from God's plan for them. And we get 10 chapters of just really naming all of the ways they've done that. And then we get here in chapter 11, and there's a, there's a turn in the prophecy, right? There's still an acknowledgement of them missing the mark, but um, God, the, the prophet announces that God will be compassionate to them and show them mercy. Yeah. Eventually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, so there's... Um, we see this sort of, that sort of thing a lot. There's there's psalms that reflect that essential structure mm-hmm. as well. Of um, you know, God has uh, God has abandoned us, uh, turned us over to our enemies, and there's and and for good reason. God has judged harshly against us, and mm-hmm. there will be uh, you know no no mercy and no hope for us, um, and then. And that'll be most of the psalm. And then the last two verses will be... The turn. The, the, but God will not... The God will restore us, mm-hmm. you know, in some way, shape, or form. And if, you, and if you read it, you would think, well, someone added those two verses on later to soften this, <laughs> right? Maybe. But they were there the whole time. Yeah. Um, that, that it is both... There is always both... Uh, judgment and uh, and hope for lack of a better word or like judgment and a means of restoration mm-hmm. okay? judgment and grace we might say right mm-hmm. um, that those things are always hand in hand they are always tied together right um, one of the th- We also get very intimate imagery in this passage. Uh, This is God describing God's self as a parent. A loving parent Mm -hmm. with these really, yeah, very intimate images, right? Mm -hmm. I taught them to walk. I took them up in my arms. When they were hurt, I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, bands of love. I was like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down and I fed them. Just this repeated imagery of a very loving, intimate, kind God. Mm-hmm. It's powerful mm-hmm. stuff. We preached on this earlier this summer. We um, did? I did. Uh, there was a, a book. Um, it might have been last summer. It was a children's book. Um, and it talked about the love of a parent to a child, and I referenced this passage. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, and so the, the anger that God experiences is rooted in this, comes from this place of love. Yeah. And, and having felt betrayed by their beloved. Yep. Essentially, right? Uh, in the first three chapters, Hosea uses um, a metaphor of an unfaithful marriage to illustrate this relationship between right. God and the people of Israel. And, um, and the people are being unfaithful right. to God. And the, it sort of breaks God's heart. Yeah. Yeah. That, that they would do this, um, that they would... And no matter how much God calls, they don't, they don't come back. Um, so it's a very emotional. It's it's not legalistic mm-hmm. in that sort of way of well, you agreed to follow these commandments, you've broken these commandments. Here's your punishment mm-hmm. for that. It's much more emotional yeah. than that. I read a commentary that compared it, as you were describing, uh, to the love of a, a parent who feels betrayed by an adolescent or an adult child. Yeah. Um, right? And uh, mm-hmm. Who is wandering off into things that the parent knows is self-destructive mm-hmm. for the, in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Commentary I read talked about a parent 
taking their child to an inpatient rehab program um, and then going home and preparing their room for them so that when they get out of the inpatient rehab, they still have a loving, mm. compassionate place to land. Mm -hmm. um, and how the amount of betrayal the parent feels that it's come to having to take their child to that and yet the love persists and the love ultimately is is what is... It's an act of love to take them there and it's an act of love to go home and prepare a room for yeah. them when they get home. And I thought that was a beautiful metaphor uh, for that because that's kind of how this feels, that God has watched God's people um, sacrifice to idols and do all these things and it breaks God's heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they're going to go off, they're going to return to Egypt, they're going to submit to Assyria, yeah. the sword will rage in their cities. And then God comes back, but but I can't give up on you. Right. I can't hand you over. Yeah. And eventually I'll roar and you'll come back. Yeah. Right. A way will be made for you to come back. Yeah. Right. Um, and so politically this is happening in the shadow of Assyria. Um, I'm trying to remember the dates that it's... Hosea was maybe active like 750 to 720 yeah. um, BCE. And uh, Jeroboam II, <laughs> who was apparently a great king, has died. Mm -hmm. And the next kings are not so great. They're also... Assyria is a huge and powerful empire. And I'm not sure what they really could have done <laughs> in the face of Assyria. Um, and so some of this is... The prophet sort of seeing... In some ways, perhaps, seeing the writing that is on the wall, mm -hmm. um, that Assyria is is devouring us. It's going down, right? Yep. Um, and and the reason that Assyria is devouring us is because we haven't been faithful. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't been faithful to God. We've um, we are not. We haven't trusted in God. We've um, gone off maybe to to chase after other religions or um, whatever the case might be. Um, and so there's that, you know, so when the, there's the sword rages in their cities, that's Assyria, um, who is there doing that. So, um, just to, that's kind of the historical context of it. So, yeah. So there's, there's a fair amount to unpack there. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. This Sunday happens to be All Saints Day. Um, I think the image of God as a loving parent would be a helpful image preaching an All Saints Day sermon. Yeah, you keep saying that. I'm, <laughs> I'm not as convinced of that. Fair enough. Um, yeah, there's certainly an appeal to the continued faithfulness of God. Um, within this passage, d despite whatever our, our circumstances, our present circumstances may be. Um, yeah, the, which uh, is partly why I like the idea of including, you know, verses, uh, verse, verses 10 and 11, this idea of, um, you know, the, Israel, the people of Israel, are, they are going to face this calamity. Yeah. Um, at the end, of, but there will be an end to that, right? Like, there will be an end to that pain, to that suffering, um, and there will be a renewal yeah. of, of sorts. And I think that's a, th a thing that we can hope for as well in the midst of our own pain and suffering or our own personal calamities. Yeah. Um, that there will be an end. Like, there is a way through mm -hmm. this, um, and there will be an end to that in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I, I I also find the images of the intimate parent loving the child as being hopeful in the midst of grief. I think those were hopeful images for me um, in the times of my life where I've experienced grief. So mm -hmm. I, 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 there's mm -hmm. there's there's material to work with there for an All Saints Day sermon. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is. I'm preaching on Sunday. I think that Greg is trying to assuage his own guilt. 
of, of this being the text. Uh, but I didn't... This, this is the narrative lectionary text. <laughs> I did not hand pluck this text mm. out of the Bible and insert it into this Sunday as I did last week. There it is. <laughs> last week. But it still fit within the larger context of the narrative that we were working on, uh, the, the text that we used last week. It just didn't happen to be the assigned text. This happens to be the assigned reading for this week, November, whatever that is, the 12th. 12th, I think. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm not, no, I'm not feeling guilty at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think it'll be good. I don't know if we'll touch the Matthew passage or not. Yeah. Well, the Matthew, the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, and specifically the Beatitudes, to me, always are a source of, of hope in the midst of trial. Yeah. And so, um, and they are often the assigned text for All Saints Day um, in the in the narr- in the revised Common Lectionary. Uh, I think at least two out of the three years, the Matthew five is is the assigned mm-hmm. text for All Saints Day. So mm-hmm. that's probably why. I included that one because that one was more of the hand picked and dropped in. That was not on the narrative lectionary list. Yeah. And anyway, it, it contains this. The folks who have passed from our lives who we would consider to be saintly um, are folks who we would probably consider to bear some of these characteristics. Certainly. Right. Um, we would probably consider them to be peacemakers or we maybe would consider to be people who have hungered and thirsted for righteousness mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. So we perceive them, or maybe even we were able to to not just perceive them, but witness them as, as being blessed mm-hmm. um, by God in some way. So there's that connection to All Saints Day, and there's also this, you know, blessed are those who mourn, right. um, is in there. As well, that sort of that reassurance um, is very obviously a part of that as well. Yeah. So it'll preach. I think it'll preach. All right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Should we uh, move on to a few announcements about what's happening in the life of our church? Let's do it. All right. Uh, we continue in our school year worship schedule, so we have an eight thirty contemplative service in the chapel, and I might add, mm-hmm. uh, noting for next year. So you can remind me of this. Okay. The Sunday after the change to daylight savings in the fall. Yeah. Print extra bulletins for the early service because people wake up early because of the time change. And so I think they're like, let's just go um, to church. Mm-hmm. And so we had a packed house in the yeah. chapel yeah, on Sunday there morning. There were a lot of people there. It was it was it was it was pleasantly full, um, and I think it was directly resulted to the change in daylight savings time. That's my guess. I haven't actually interviewed those who attended that service, but uh, we had a full house and it yeah. was it was lovely. Hmm. That could be. Mm-hmm. So, 8.30 contemplative service every morning, not just the morning of daylight savings. <laughs> 9.15 Sunday school hour and 10.30 traditional service and we will be on that schedule pretty much uh, through next May with a few exceptions, which we'll bring to your attention when those exceptions arise. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, Christmas Eve this year is also Advent 4. You don't need to worry about that till December 24th, but we're worrying about it already for you. So, uh, But yeah, 8.30 contemplative, 9.15 Sunday school hour, 10.30 traditional. Mm-hmm. Yep, uh, at Forum this coming week, Dan Deffenbaugh, our scholar in residence, will be wrapping up um, his forum series that's been taking a look at sort of the history and development of um, what we sort of think about as the nation state of Israel, right? Yep. Um, so he's been taking a look at the scriptures that we've been using on Sunday mornings mm-hmm. uh, and taking it and giving people an understanding of um, the the history. You know, we've talked about it a couple, Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, uh, Judah, Samaria, Jerusalem, you know, King David, Solomon, Temple, all those sorts of things um, within the scriptures, and so he'll be he'll be wrapping up. Um, what I think has been a really really interesting forum series. Yeah, this coming Sunday. That's yeah. that's the November twelfth. So. And we recorded the one yesterday. Yep. Uh, we did not record the one the first week he did it, but Dan's going to uh, very graciously go back and uh, 
redo that lecture for us in some format so that we've got those and then that series will be posted on our YouTube channel um, and eventually on um, a little resource that we're creating that would provide those kind of adult ed resources in a easy to access and curated way. So we'll talk more about that later. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's this coming Sunday for Forum. And the next Sunday, November 19th, Hannah Jensen Heitman, who is this year's artist in residence um, at First Press, is going to be doing, she's going to start a series of forums taking a look at the cantata that she has written that will be offered in December. So, uh, so folks can kind of start to get a preview of the cantata titled Bearers of the Divine and learn from the artist, uh, you know, what, what sort of things might they want to be looking for on December 10th. Themes, ideas, musical intrigues, um, all that sort of stuff. So that's November 19th when that forum series starts. So. Yeah, and that'll be great. Mm -hmm. um, also on Sunday, November 19th, immediately following worship, we will have our Hanging of the Greens service. Yeah. Uh, so we invite people to just uh, plan to stay an extra 30 minutes to an hour after worship to help us get our beautiful sanctuary and building decorated for the Advent and Christmas season. Mm -hmm. So please plan on joining us. So this Sunday, November 12th is All Saints Day. Next Sunday, November 19th, is uh, we'll conclude service with the Hanging the Greens. That will also be the Sunday that we uh, announce the results of the capital campaign. Uh, Sunday the 19th. So stay tuned for that as well. Um, we had a really blessed service on Sunday to collect those pledge cards and say a prayer of dedication over them. And uh, we're in the process of tallying them. We have a few more coming in. And uh, on Sunday the 19th, we will share those uh, those results with you as well. Yeah. So, But we're encouraged. Very encouraged. Yeah. Very encouraged. So thank you for your generosity. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, we are full of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So another thing to keep in mind, because it's coming up, uh, December 2nd, I believe 10 to 1, we'll have a family Advent craft morning here at the church. Um, and so the crafts, I think, are particularly designed for children, but um, I do lots of things that are designed for children, and they're great. So... <laughs> Anybody could could show up and be part of it, or just show up and just you know just take in the joy of the gathering, right? Yeah. Um, so folks can come to the church and, and make some Advent crafts decorations for this season. That's December second, ten to one o'clock, ten in the morning to one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, which is a Saturday. Did we say that? I don't think I did, but yeah, it's a Saturday. It should be a good uh, good day. And there is um, a little something special. If uh, if your kids come down to that, they'll uh, they'll be making crafts that they can give as Christmas gifts. They will also be given uh, a craft from the church uh, that they can wrap up and put under the tree. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... Not, not that the kids themselves will make, but that the church uh, has created as part of our 50th. Oh, that's cool. So that's kind of a neat a little, thing uh, as well. Keepsake. A little keepsake to celebrate uh, the church's 150th and all that. So, And it's been a good year for the church. Yeah. It's been a good celebration of the 150th. Mm -hmm. So, What else? I think we can close in a prayer. All right, let's do it. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the ways that you have sustained us. We thank you for the ways that you have grown us. We thank you for the ways that you have called us to be your children, your faithful disciples in the world. We thank you for the ways that you have called us back, even when uh, we have gone wandering from those paths, from the directions, the choices that you would have us make in the world. Thank you, O oh God, for, the, for both your nurture and your challenge. In your gracious and loving name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well then, with all those things said and done, until next time, toodaloo.